Exercise 14D, Weighted Networks. This entire exercise is all about trying to find the shortest path. And this is where I will also introduce you to a concept called Dijkstra's algorithm. Now, I will say if you're following along with the textbook, particularly the Cambridge textbook, they explain this in the most difficult and most convoluted and complicated way you could possibly imagine. I can assure you that the way that I'll be going through it is much easier and is totally acceptable in the exam. So we'll start, as always, with a problem-solving question. So example one, I am on a journey from the city of Bartow to the city of Kenton, and the map sh below shows the distance in kilometres. Part A, I want to determine the shortest distance from Bartow to each other city, and then write the number, as in the distance, next to the city on the graph, and then B, hence or otherwise state in order the list of cities that provide the shortest route from Bato to Kenton and how long this path is. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go and annotate the graph. So annotate, A-E-N-N-O-T-A-T-E, -N -N -E, means I'm just making little comments on the sides or onto the graph so I know what my thinking is. So we wanna find the shortest distance from each of the cities from Bato. So we'll start with Bato. Now the distance from Bato to Bato, so must always include that one as well, is zero. So I'm just gonna write a big old zero there. And then I can look at my other one. So the distance from Bato to Croghorn. So the distance from Bato to Croghorn, going from, and I'll get my little highlighters here. The distance from Bato to Croghorn going this way is 12, but we could also get to Croghorn going this way. So via Stratmore and Melville, seven plus eight plus six, fortunately is not smaller than 12. So we can get rid of that. Uh, theoretically, we could also get to Croghorn by going all the way around this way, can get to Croghorn that way. We could also get to Croghorn via this path here or via Kenton. In each of these cases, those highlightings are much longer than the actual one here. So the shortest distance out of all those combinations is going to be 12. The shortest distance to Stratmore, there is no other way, no other path that would be shorter than seven. So we're gonna put seven here. Melville is probably our first main choice. We can either go seven plus eight, which will get us 15, or 12 plus six, which would be 18. So we always will, uh, we, well, I suppose we could try the other way. We could probably seven plus nine plus five, but we could probably see just by looking at the graph that that's going to be even longer. So what we can do is we will just pick the smallest one and next to Melville, I'm just going to write 15 there. Osburn. So you've got a choice of going from Melville, 15 plus five, which is 20, or seven plus nine, which gets me 16, or 12 plus 20, which gets me 32. So we're gonna go with the seven plus nine, because that's gonna be the shortest distance to Osborne, which is 16. And then my choices are, I can either go from, to, if I wanna to get to Kenton, I can go from Melville to Kenton, 15 plus 13, which is 28, or 16 plus 11, which is 27. So we're gonna go with Kenton from Osborne to Kenton, which is 27. So the short, we have written now the shortest distance to get from Bartow to each of those cities. And so we can say that the total, the shortest path is 27 kilometers. And we're going from Bartow to Stratmore to Osborne and to Kenton that way. Now that annotation I've done on the graph is actually the acceptable method that we can use to show that we have done Dijkstra's algorithm. Dijkstra, a very famous programmer and mathematician, um, had come up with this algorithm to find the shortest path. Now when most people teach this algorithm, they do a thing called, uh, basically like this box and grid method, which I'll show you uh, in the next video. Uh, I will like to say that the box method is so complicated, so confusing, people always make mistakes with it. It is unnecessary. 
In order to get full marks to show that you've done Dijkstra's algorithm, you can simply just go and annotate the graph like I've done there with all the minimum distances. Uh, and that will be, as long as each of those distances you've annotated is correct, you have shown that you have done Dijkstra's algorithm or you have shown in your head that you have determined the shortest path. Example two, state the shortest path from vertex A to vertex H using Dijkstra's algorithm. If you want to have a go, pause this video and then what you can do is replay it to go and check your answers. As usual, I'll start from the distance from A to A is zero. The shortest distance to C is going to be two. The shortest distance to D, there are lots of different choices, but it's actually going to be two plus two, which is four. The shortest distance to B is either eight, seven, or six. So we'll go with six. The shortest distance to E, it's either going to be seven or five. So five is the choice that we go here. Uh, to get to G, the shortest distance will either be four plus three, which is seven, or five plus one, which is six. So we go with six. Uh, now I reckon that if I do six plus two is eight, uh, that's going to be by far the shortest distance because every other version is getting a great 10 or more. So we'll go with that one, which means that the shortest distance, I've written there rather silly 12 there, no? Uh, and the shortest distance there is going to be from eight plus three, which is 11. Example three, find the shortest path between vertex uh, I and vertex VII. So again, similar principle, go with zero here. Shortest distance to get to point two is five. The shortest distance to get to uh, point three, uh, I, 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 or three is gonna be eight. Let's get to four here. So four, I can either do eight plus two is 10, five plus three is eight. So we'll go with eight is our shortest one here. To option V or option five, we've got eight plus 18, which is gonna be 26, or eight plus 12, which is gonna be 20, um, and that by far is gonna be the shortest one, so we'll go with 20. With option VI, or option six, I can do eight plus 30, which is 38, five plus 16, which is 21. Uh, that by far looks like it's gonna be the shortest, so we'll go 21. Um, there. So it looks like the short, now we've got two options. We can either go 24 or uh, 24, so because 20 plus four is 24, or eight plus 14 is going to be 22. So we'll go with 22 is our answer. Now in both of these examples, I needed to state the shortest path. So for the first one, uh, the shortest path was going from A to C, to D, to E, to G, to F, to H. And in the second one, it's zero to two, to four, to five, and no, 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 it's not. It's four directly to seven like that, and that gets me 22. When you're answering questions like this, either make it very clear with a highlighter, but you know, never assume that highlighting is gonna come out well in uh, when they do the photocopied scan. So we should also write this like this, A to C to D to E to G to F to H. And in this one, we'll go I to II to IV to VII. Example four, the network below shows the travel time in minutes along a series of roads that connects the student's home to school. And we need to find the shortest time in minutes for the student to travel from home to school. Why don't you have a go? And then play this video to find your answer. Okay, zero. Quickest way to get to this point is seven. Uh, the quickest way to get to here will be seven plus two, which is nine. Uh, to get to this point is going to be 11. Uh, I can either go 13 or 14. No, we'll go 13. And then nine plus 12 is 21. That's still gonna be by far the shortest version. 7 plus 19 is going to be 26. Uh, no, sorry. 
Oh, I'm right, 26, yep, 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 yep. 16 plus three is 19, that's uh, seven plus 14 is 21, so that's still the by far the, the quickest. So it looks like I'm narrowed down to 26, 24, or 23. So it looks like the shortest distance there is 23. If we go by this method, seven, two, 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 three, and this way. That should be the quickest and best way to get to there. So my answer will be B.